Hello everyone, welcome to the first official video of my channel. And today we're going to be looking at um I've been I've been participating in the Game Dev TV Challenge Club. And in particular, I've been having a lot of fun with the Trail Maker, I believe is what it's called. It's a 3D side scroller. And basically with the the Game Dev TV the challenge club what what happens is they give you every week they give you a game kind of skeleton it's a skeleton project it's not complete uh, they give you a set of goals that to complete to get you know basic gameplay going and then some optional goals to add additional features additional gameplay features and then finally in the end you get a chance to kind of do a miniature game jam um, basically and then make it your own however you want and spend as much time and effort on it as, as you want or as little as you want. So it's very open, freeform, and, and at the same time gives you a little bit of structure and that it presents you with something and gives you some goals, which is I'm finding very helpful. Um, I don't have a lot of time on my hands with work, and this is an after-work project for me. And so coming up with a complete game on my own from scratch just for the purposes of playing around I, I have a bit of trouble with that just time wise I struggle with that so this is an ideal format for me and I've been having a lot of fun with it so let's jump right in right now and take a look at the project that you start with so this is what you start with when you pull in the assets from the project it's just a basic kind of side scroller um, I haven't touched anything I've just loaded up the scene uh, I'll hit play and we'll see what happens <laughs> all right so yeah there you go and then something happened with the lighting there when the scene reloaded so I'll have to see what's up with that because I've noticed that and I haven't fixed it yet in my build either so you can jump and you can accelerate um, basically you can you know platforms you get the idea and obviously the camera's not moving um, it's very static and you can only get to the end here the clouds don't continue uh, so the the main goal that you're given is to make it so these platforms can randomly generate and then there's a wider variety of them which isn't very difficult um, so let's let's go ahead and jump into my project and I'll show you where I'm at with this and we'll, we'll play it first so you can see where I've gotten to and then I'll explain what I've done I'm going to close this out alright so a little bit more bland but that's because I got some more uh, procedural generation going I actually have the clouds and the platforms generating we'll get to the clouds in a minute first let's start with the platforms so with the platforms uh, I've taken down here I've taken it started with the three the the single red ones the the double platforms and then the full line and I, I went into all of these and I added three endpoints okay so that it can choose to continue from one of these endpoints um, and then there's a variant pull ID. That's for the, the pooling, because we're trying not to have to instantiate a new object every single time we need a platform. We're, we're reusing everything. So as soon as something gets off the screen, it, it's deactivated, put into the pool, and then when it's needed, it's pulled back in, in and reactivated. We'll go over that in a minute as well. So the platform script here has an array of endpoints. You can add more if you wanted more options um, more gameplay features and there's an actually two query indexes here at the moment this one needs removed um, when I first got this going I made a, a, a pooling system for just the platforms um, keep it simple you know I wasn't trying to over over develop for sample projects so I just made it for the platforms but then I found I wanted to use it for the cloud so I need to expand and I created this this variant pool so that I didn't have to differentiate somehow between a platform and a cloud when I needed to grab this query index I can just whether it's platform or cloud I just grab the variant pool ID and it gives me the, the data I need for that but 
that's getting off topic uh, for a moment anyway let's back back out so um those are the three starting platforms and what i did is i created 19 more i didn't use the singles but i used the doubles and basically just you know some basic stuff some ramps some short short stairs sharp stairs some dips and divots and and so on and so forth some variations basically um let's play this and see how it turns out uh oh so this is a problem i gotta work on bug number one we'll, we'll come back to this let's reload Here we go. So as you can see, the platforms are spawning. Um, there's variations. Um, they're not repeating too much. As you can see in the background, I have the clouds spawning and as the player move, uh oh. bug again this is something I'm, I'm i have ideas for but i'm not going to get into that yet because i haven't dealt with it yet so i'll stop there but as you can see i have uh all the various platforms are being pulled from and generated uh shoot try one more time oh boy there we go Alright, so it's a little bit of a button spammer with the way I have the platform set up and the fact that the controller, I haven't modified the controller at all. So the fact that the fact that you can kind of get stuck on the edge of a, a, like that, you can get stuck on the edge of a platform, I haven't really dealt with that yet, but I have ideas and I'm going to work on it. Mainly, when it's like this, you can just jump out of it and whatever. When you're on the underside, it gets a little bit more difficult and I'm going to make it so you can nudge down. But you'll notice that the clouds are kind of staying with the player. As the player gets higher, they, they rise higher. And as he goes lower, the same thing will happen. Um, except for when you die. <laughs> anyway, okay. So, what I have here is... Uh, I have a master object for the platforms. This contains all the platforms. And it has the variant pool script on it. A variant pool being different from a regular pool these are things I created so it doesn't really matter but the difference for me is that instead of just pulling a sim single object and just pulling from that over and over and over again in this situation I want to have a variety of objects that are pulled um, and so, so you know a variant pool uh, in in here we have an array of prefabs which has 19 prefabs at the moment and if this looks a little different than something you might be using in your editor I'm using Odin inspector uh, I picked it up a while back on sale and when I'm not doing something that requires me not to use it I, I really prefer to use it because it, it's just handy it, it quickens certain things that makes things faster um, anyway I digress so this holds the prefab and you have a little slider here for the key size you can set it up from 5 to 20 this is how many you want to pre-initialize and then the pulls down here it's not initialized yet until you start the game and then it will initialize and this is actually a good way to, to visualize this Let's pause okay so the pulls here we go you can see that I have a bunch of cues with uh, transforms and the queue size is five so they all have five in it minus the ones that here 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 that already have platforms spawned um, basically each of these is one of the platforms and these queues um, pull in and out as necessary for the spawns the way that works let's go let's go in here and go to our variant pool so what happens is we have um, an array of transforms for the prefabs, and then we have the queue size, and then we have the actual queue of pools. And when we when we first load in, when when we wake up, we create our queue of transforms as an array um, of length for the amount of prefabs. So we have one 
Q array for every, excuse me, we have one Q in the array for every prefab that we have in our list. And then we loop through our prefabs and we create that Q and then we loop th through the Q size and we initialize that many objects into that specific Q. And in here we grab the variant pool ID that we talked about briefly and we set the Q index and then what that does is that references which array element that specific prefab belongs to so that when you're enqueuing and or yeah when you're re enqueuing the object um, you put it in the right pool and they don't get mixed up very important and then when you you're pulling an object out we're actually selecting from one of the pools at random we're, we're getting a random index here um, between zero and the length of the pool and then we're checking to see if that that specific queue has any objects left in it if it has an object left in it we return that we pull it out of the queue and return it and if it doesn't we look for a different index and try to find one that does have an object left in it and that's how we are randomly generating the queues um, in the platform excuse me randomly generating the platforms in our platform spawner here we have our variant pool right that's the actual uh, pool object that's holding the platforms and we have a tag filter we're tagging our platforms so that we can identify them because we have different colliders on the the platform and we're using colliders to spawn the next platform and we don't want it to we don't want that collision detection to work for each child element we only want it to work for the platform itself so we tag it and we identify by that tag and basically if the tag doesn't match we we just exit out if the tag does match we DQ a platform at random we set the position to um, the platform that caused the spawn action so it, it enters a trigger a collider and when that trigger collider when it when it fires off this is the code that runs and that platform has a function to get one of those endpoints um, one of those endpoint objects we talked about so it grabs one of those endpoint objects at random and sets the platform position to that and then activates the game object and that is the spawner and the despawner is very similar in that you you filter for the tag and then you re enqueue that object and as you re enqueue it it disables the game object automatically uh, well not automatically but in the variant pool here when you enqueue it sets the game object to false so that we're not enqueuing an active object ever unintentionally okay and then the same queue works for the clouds um, instead of having let's go back into unity so instead of having different platform groups that we've kind of created variations for we have different models here so I have a master cloud object and then I have variations and the variations are just the different models tied in okay and so one of those will spawn at random and then in the cloud we have on awake we actually randomly scale the object between a minimum and maximum that we set up in the inspector with default values of 1.5 to 2.5 um, because the clouds by default are pretty small they look better between the scale size and that's obviously adjustable in the inspector like we mentioned um, so we have our cloud object we set our min max skill and then we have the endpoints for the cloud and when we get an endpoint what we do is we have a we pass in the players y to the get endpoint function instead of so on the platform we get an endpoint and it just grabs one of them at random but for the cloud if we do that the players follow in the platforms the platforms can spawn randomly and the player just follows whatever level they spawn at but if the clouds are spawning randomly the player can go down here and then the clouds can wind up up here off screen spawning elsewhere or out of range of the collider that causes them to spawn and then they won't despawn and that will break things so we want the clouds to kind of stay within a relative position to the player 
uh, as he's going up and down in the world. So we pass in the player's Y position, um, and that's that's added with an offset because we don't want each individual cloud to have this information. So in the spawner, in the cloud spawner here, we have um, a Y offset for the player. And we pass in the player's Y position to the get in point with the offset. And that's like how far above the player we want the clouds to kind of sit. Or try to sit, rather. And... Where was it? Okay. So the in point here is we, we subtract the player Y from the cloud position Y. And we do a math dot sign to see if it's positive or negative. And then we check, hey, is it positive? Is it over zero? equal to zero, less than zero, and we choose one of the endpoints depending on that. So based on where the player is and the cloud is, we, we say, hey, am I below, above or below the player? And depending on where I am, I'm going to choose the, the endpoint that's going to take me towards the player. And that can take him above or below the player still, and then on the next iteration, it'll go above or below still. And that is what gives that nice random effect um, because I set these three initial clouds here at different levels, right? So that they're not they're not set at even spacing, like one, two, three. They're not integer spacing. They're, they're various float positions, so they're they're offset. And then when you play and you spawn everything, um, they use the player position and they try to stay. Oops. They try to stay within, and that bug, I gotta fix that. It gets annoying because you can't get out of it without stopping play. Uh, and that's that's very annoying, especially for a player. I, the developer, I know what's going on and I'm here with the editor, so that's one thing, but the player, that's unacceptable behavior. Uh, yeah. So I definitely gotta fix that. But yeah, the clouds, they, as you saw, in the multiple times we've, we've played they that's really annoying i've really got to fix that it's the next thing i'm going to do when i get up when we get done with this recording here we go so you'll notice that the clouds are kind of staying somewhat within the player like as i drop down they come back down as i go up they they try to go up so they stay in relative to position to the player somewhat as best as possible with a, a basic positional check and and in that offset I have them five units above the player so they're trying to position themselves like five units above where the players at in the world constantly and so as the player moves up or down they, they try to move up or down in relation and as you can see, this is kind of just a button spam right now. Uh, one of the next things I'm going to do is add like collectible coins, and I want to add um, kind of a score. I want to keep track of distance, like how many platforms you've you've traversed, and and keep score that way. Um, so so a score in distance, and then in like collectibles, add uh, collectibles, maybe some boosters that that can give you certain certain boosts or something, I don't know. Um, for the moment, we're going to stick with like score-related, kind of high score-related type stuff. How many coins you collected, how far you've gotten. Uh, maybe maybe how fast, top speed, how, like how fast you've traversed, but that might not be fair because it's kind of random. You, you're button mashing. Um, I got to think about that. Okay, but back to this so we have our variant pool and this works with the clouds and the platforms um, and the platforms are very simple it's just an array of endpoints and this Q index that we can actually get rid of we don't need that there anymore yeah that doesn't have to be part of the platform because we're not using it anymore um, and in the cloud the cloud has the actual cloud object the min scale max scale, and the two endpoints for it um, and then again on awake it it randomizes the scale sets it and then it also rotates um, it rotates along the x-axis so they're not ever identical like each 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 
variant is is rotating so you have a different profile a different um, silhouette of it all the time so it's kind of like a different cloud sort of it gives the effect anyway especially when there's a lot of them on screen maybe there's some of the same ones but they're they're just a little bit different so the silhouette's just a little bit off and then the variant pool this is the q index and just getting and setting the q index that keeps track of where that goes um, cloud spawner, despawner, it's all fairly simple at the moment. Um, the spawners I have attached here, I'll grab the player, back out so you can kind of visualize. So these two colliders here, these green boxes are colliders, and the front collider is the spawner, the back collider is the despawner. So as the objects hit the despawner, um, they, they go back into the queue, and then as they when they enter this this spawn trigger and these clouds um, because it's touching it when it loads in initially it triggers that hey I'm, I'm in the collider trigger and so it starts spawning um, and then basically these move th these are ch children of the player and so they move with the player as the player is moving so as the player is bouncing along these are moving along and then as the platform colliders Grab this one right here. So actually, let's. We're gonna go into platform A1, which is this platform here. Okay. And then we're gonna hide the cubes. I'm gonna go in here and just turn them off. So these are the individual. Those are the individual platforms, right? And when I select one of them, if I turn the mesh render off, you can see that's the the collider for that individual cube. Right, turn the mesh render back on. That's the visualization. Um, and so each one of these, turn them on, turn those off. Each one of those has its individual collider. And then, oops, turn those off. So here, the platform itself has the collider as well. This one is just a trigger, though. This is the one that hits. This hits the spawn collider, and activates the spawn the colliders for these individual objects are the ones these are not triggers and these are the ones that the player actually interacts with physically like physical colliders and so far that's how we've set it up we've taken the 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 simple scene that they gave us and the basic elements and we've modified them we've added some endpoints uh, to both the clouds and the platforms we've used we have one pool it's a variant pool and the very you know pool ID for the the versions in the pool um, other than that we have uh, scripts for the platform itself and then the platform spawner and despawner and the cloud and the cloud spawner and despawner and that's it uh, six seven eight scripts in total so far make this entire thing work with with the death plane <laughs> the death plane uh, that sounds fun um, right here that so the death plane is whoop, down there that thing so when the player falls and goes down it hits that and then that reloads the scene and starts everything over that's the hey you died plane <laughs> um, and then that that's pretty much it for the moment. I mean, it's pretty simple. Um, with the clouds, I can go in and, and detail this. Um, like the platform, the platform has a, a parent object. And the platform spawn within that. Well, the clouds, because I have different... Different depths of clouds, basically. I have multiples there. Um, this one has its own variant pool right so that way it has 15 of each different cloud to choose for it this one has 15 for it this one has 15 for it the reason we do that instead of having just one pool for all of them is because then one of them could use all of one variation right it, it just it makes it so the variations that are available for each one are limited because you might pull more for one than the other and they can get it, it gets looking weird this way for one it keeps it simple I'm not having to redesign the pool to be able to work with multiple different objects and spawns at once um, 
it just it keeps it simple. There's a lot of clouds that can spawn, and I've actually had it run out of of objects in the queue, and I haven't set it up to generate more if there's none available, and that actually crashes the game. So I've had to to balance that because um, I don't want too many queued up, and I, I just, this works. One thing about game development that I have learned is that sometimes if it works, stop. Stop messing with it. It works. Leave it. Um, that's not always good practice, especially if you have to come back to something and fix it later. But we're just prototyping. We're having fun. We're making a portfolio piece. We're just... This isn't like money on the line, right? So we can, we can do this. We can keep it simple. And, and yeah, that's it so far. Those eight scripts. Um, go over them one more time. We got the, the two despawners that they just have a, a reference to the pool and then a tag filter. If the object is, doesn't match the tag, we, we jump out. We just exit early. And then if it does match, we enqueue the object, which by calling that, it disables the object and shoves it back in the queue. And that's the same for both the cloud spawner and the despawner. I could actually seems like there's duplicate code there but I'm not keeping it simple we're not gonna look too deep into that right now this isn't something that's gonna go production live right now so keep it simple um, platform spawner and despawner same thing they have a a reference to the pool tag filter if it doesn't match the tag we exit early otherwise we grab um, one of the platforms or clouds from the pool we set the position based on an endpoint that we get from the object initializing the call and then we activate it pretty simple and straightforward on both of those okay the variant pool ID it's just again an integer ID that that says hey this this variant belongs to this pool in in this um, Pretty simple, just a reference, an index, and then the actual cloud. We've gone over that. It's uh, just an, a reference to the cloud object so that we can scale and rotate it. We have the minimum and maximum scale values that we can set, and then the two endpoint references um, to move it up or down depending on the player's location. The platforms are even simpler. They have an array of endpoints. They can have as many as you want to randomly select from, so that can allow for more interesting things because like I have them vertically stacked but you could have them positioned all over the place and randomly selected so that could uh, depending on how your platforms are set up that could lead to very interesting uh, gameplay Basi basically you just you manipulate the platform and manipulate the endpoints add them to the pool and that's all you have to do it's included in the game at that point pretty simple uh, very nice uh, and yeah, it's I mean this is just a simple pool very common pool object It's just added a little bit of depth for the variation. We, we make an array of cues instead of just a queue for a single object um, It's actually really simple Let's go let's go play one more time cuz oh Yeah, it's gonna rebuild cuz I did that I deleted two spaced empty lines of code and it had to rebuild. Fine. Anyway, let's play one more time. And then call it a call it a video after that. Ooh, I let go of the boost there for a minute and that almost cost me. I hit it just in the nick of time to get stuck on that brick. That was cool. <laughs> I have, I, I, this is a little bit addicting, I gotta admit. And I like the idea that the platforms, like, as fun as this is, I can add any number of variations or different um, configurations. Uh, you can move the endpoints around so they spawn in different ways. Ah, there we go. <laughs> and then there it is, that light. I don't know if you noticed that, but the light changed. Let's, let's do that one more time. That's that's something we're going to debug here um, shortly in our next little session. It's bright. Uh, I kind of fall down. Oops. Okay, try one more time.
If we don't get it this time, that's it. We're going to call it. Oh, here we go. Okay, so it's bright, and then we reload, and it's dark. Yeah, so the lighting isn't reloading properly with the scene. Something to fix. Anyway, hope you guys enjoyed the video. Uh, if you watched the entire thing, um, like and subscribe, please. This is the first video on my channel, and I'm trying to... Uh, trying to do this more often i'll have another video after i make some more progress give me a week or so and uh maybe next weekend i'll, I'll make another video everybody i hope you're having a, a great time good day uh good night hope everybody's healthy stay safe have a good day